yeah, having you know, got to Interlagos from Austin, um, the, the track here is, to some degree, it's a, again a reasonable mixture of low and high speed corners. If anything, the downforce level we normally run here is slightly lower than Austin. Austin is normally classically very near the maximum downforce level, particularly to get the tyres working. Where here it's a little bit more, a little bit more normal um, downforce level for the, the tracks. With the nature of the corners there, there's quite a few which are braking and turning with lateral where it's normally difficult to get the car balance correct. So there's quite a few challenge, you know, uh, sort of medium to low speed corners there. And then you've got to get the right balance for the, you know, the right you know, drag level for the, the long run up the hill and down the straight, really. The original um, tyre choice that Prelli had made for um, Brazil was the hard and the medium. I think that was a relatively conservative choice. And in the end, I think when um, they started looking at the, how much of the track had been uh, resurfaced and the actual nature of the surface, it does look like it's going to give the tyres an easier time. So therefore, they've come to a, a choice that I think will be you know, everyone will be more happy with of the, the medium and the soft compound. I think with the nature of the, 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 the track at Interlagos, you know, races do end up sort of being a little bit more random than you would normally see. Um, the weather is sometimes a factor there with you know, sudden massive downpours that have certainly upset a few races in the past. Um, and similarly, if anything, the, you know, the, the tyre wear has been severe and pushes you more towards multi-stops. Um, I'm not sure what that, the case will be like that with the resurfacing there, so we, we'll have to wait and see. Although we're coming from a back-to-back -back race with Austin, um, there's still a, a large number of test items that we've got to try and get through. Um, again, it's learning for um, 2015 uh, rather than car development of this year, but there's still quite a lot of key things we need to understand and, tr and try and work on both aerodynamically and both on the power unit. One of the new elements introduced for 2014 is the power unit. This deserves a special mention because of its overall complexity and also because of the fact that we will use less fuel, significantly less fuel than last year. The power unit consists of a 1.6 litre V6 internal combustion engine and also the air system, which in turn consists of a MGUK, MGUH, battery pack and a control unit that controls all this. There is also the turbocharger and the gearbox. The various components of the power unit of course have to be cooled. The main one that needs to be cooled is the engine through its oil and its water but also as it's a turbocharged engine to have maximum combustion efficiency we cool the air that enters the engine from the turbocharger. Also of course we have to cool the MGUK and H and the battery pack. We use air to cool the car through highly developed and very efficient radiators, which we circulate the liquid for this cooling with a mixture of mechanical and electrical pumps. The cooling of a car, of course, has to be effective, but if it's not effective, quite bad things can happen. As it's a high performance engine, it really is at the limit of its performance and if it is not cooled correctly, it will explode and the same thing goes for the batteries, which really work at their limit. Cooling can be improved with the help of the bodywork, by cutting slots of it, but this is of course to the detriment of the aerodynamics. 